the renminbi will be considered by the international community as a freely usable international currency and will join the basket of the special drawing rights. Well, a big step forward for China's economic standing China's currency, in the yuan. It's a milestone for China, it was a milestone for the world, and it reflected the reform progress that China made before. My name is Steven, and I have interviewed over 100 famous people from China's economic and financial circles. But today, I'm going to talk to someone whose story will boggle your mind. He first came into the public eye in 2015, when the IMF announced that the RMB would be included in the valuation basket. As the vice president of the IMF, he was the first Chinese in history to enter IMF's top ranks. His name, Zhu Min. I met Zhu Min in Shenzhen, who had come from Beijing for the Tianhai Forum. In 2015, the renminbi had risen in importance in international trade and in the global financial sector, thus creating a historic opportunity. The IMF believed that the renminbi was most likely to stand out and enter the SDR. The International Monetary Fund is headquartered in Washington, D.C. It was founded in 1945 and is listed as one of the world's two major financial institutions along with the World Bank. Let me show you something that does not exist. You know that the SDR is a virtual currency, but to visualize what it could look like, it is really uh, a basket of uh, currencies that includes the US dollar, the euro, the RMB, the Japanese yen, and the British uh, pound. It is the unit of account that the IMF can actually issue. Special drawing rights are also known as paper gold. It is a book asset that can be used to repay IMF debt and to compensate for the balance of payment deficit between different governments. China's ascension to SDR is both a proverbial opportunity and challenge. The first part of the way is the statistics. The statistics department also under my supervision, so I, we really put a lot of resource to searching the data globally and make sure we have a solid base RMB. Indeed, it's the fifth largest trading currency. But the second issue is also important. If RMB get into the SDR basket, it got to be a tradable currency. So you need the yield curve, right? Uh, you need to further allow foreign uh, institutes access to the Chinese market, I mean RMB market. So that's required Chinese government to a lot of reforms. And the third part is, uh, within that, we need internally within the IMF, we need to rethink about what IMB, uh, because the different uh, system mechanism represents, how do we manage the new basket. So there's a lot of policy uh, processing discussions a lot of things. How long do you think this process will take for these stars to align? I'm from China, but also more represent IMF for the whole world. I see both sides, so I think I should give credit to Governor Zhou Xiaochuan. He was then the governor of the Central Bank of China. It's amazing. We sent a team to Beijing at that time. Remember, we have a long list of what you should do to be able to meet uh, a trading quality for the RMB. You know, and in such a short time, it's roughly uh, six to seven months. He pushed all the reform down, built a yield curve, and uh, uh, liberalized the market interest rates and allow the foreign uh, investor access to domestic bonds market. All those things in due time would be able to meet the requirement. Within the IMF, Chris Lagarde also very you know, engineering on those issues. He, he mobile the stuff, creatively think about a new SDR basket, right? It, it take a quite long time, but at the end, I think everybody is happy. Well, I was very privileged because I was part of the group uh, that worked with the Chinese authorities. It was a milestone for China, it was a milestone for the world, and it reflected the reform progress that China made before.
It ultimately means other countries now can use the RMB freely in their transactions for the opening up of the Chinese financial system, the bond and equity markets. Other countries now might acquire RMB bonds, central banks in the world are now holding a share of their reserves in RMB, sovereign wealth funds and even the private sector. And I think that has all been somewhat linked to the inclusion of the RMB in the SDR basket. Chu Min seized a good opportunity to support the RMB's acceptance into the basket. Acting as a bridge between China and the world, he played a pivotal role. But still, still nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> those are more economic theory books. Mm -hmm. um, so those are basically books. In regards to Ju Min's contribution to the IMF, he championed for growth and employment to be included in IMF's global governance system. In fact, Ju Min helped the IMF achieve many advantages for developing countries, while at the same time earning their trust. During the crisis, particularly on the European crisis, I realized that growth and the job have become more important for the whole world. But it's interesting, growth and job is not core part of Article 4 program. But how do we put those into the process? So it's very interesting. I talked to the Minister of Finance for various countries politically to get their support. Then I talk to the various staff, and the people also agree with me. And I get 20 some member country to support the idea. And the staff consensus with the concept. It roughly take 18 months. We, we had a board meeting. Finally, the board have a decision, adapt the job and the growth surprise effect, the being the part of Article 4 surveillance content. In the IMF, I'm the first Chinese people being the senior management members. The people you don't know how to talk to a Chinese manager, right? They have a 1,500 PhD economists. The meeting never lasts more than an hour. Every time you talk, you limit your time in 90 seconds. And made a point. If you don't point, shut up. He was trying to um, identify areas where he could make a difference. So uh, some of the areas he championed were fragile states, uh, small states, developing countries. And so he really um, uh, tried to push uh, the agenda forward. During his tenure, Zhu Min participated in the resolution of many international financial risks and challenges, such as the European debt crisis. With international vision and superb professional talent, he reconstructed the IMF's global governance system with a new approach. He became more involved in the formulation of international financial governance rules with Chinese wisdom. When Zhu Ming returned home in the 1990s, he worked here and was well-versed in global standards on many financial issues with unbiased insight and accurate judgment. He conveyed an international image of Chinese officials, allowing the outside world to have a personal look at China's mysterious financial echelon. Looking back at a 16-year-old Zhu Min, it seems impossible to imagine that he could later rise to become a well-known figure in the world of finance. At that time, he had dropped out of middle school to work as a laborer in a suburban food factory in Shanghai, where he would work for the next 10 years. I was assigned to a factory. Being a labor, I was uh, shipping and uh, carrying things. Sugar was 200 pounds. Later, I became a truck driver, right? I'm still a, a shipper. So I drive a car to many, many China. I never realized China was so poor at that time, right? So that's actually bring me a real sense of China, of what does mean a real Chinese. I continue learning, you know, reading. Although the book is still very limited, but I can read Mark's book you know, as a history book. Fortunately, Zhu Min seized the opportunity to resume the college entrance examination. And as fate would have it, he was admitted to the economics department of Fudan University at the age of 25. Fudan was, at that time, so open and so lively. Professors are wonderful, wonderful now because they lost 10 years too. They tried to teach us as much as they can. So that was a fantastic four years in college and also working as an assistant professor in Fudan for another three years. After graduating from Fudan University, 33-year-old Zhu Min went to the United States to study. He earned a master's degree in public administration from Princeton University, 
a master's degree in economics from John Hopkins University, and a doctorate in economics. In 1990, Ju Min was an economist at the World Bank Policy Bureau. Although he was living abroad, he still wanted to contribute to China. After returning to his home country in 1996, he served as deputy governor of the Bank of China and deputy governor of the People's Bank of China. I came back to China in 1996, 1997, 1998, and Asia financial crisis blew out. It was not easy transitioning either. Number one, I work for the World Bank. It's a well-paid job. Go back to China, I have to take Chinese salary, right? So I lost more than 95% of my salary. I took my daughter with me. I decided to send to her to a public school. She was nine in the third grade. The teacher asked her question. She stand up, can't say anything. It's only tear. The second challenge is the job. It's a complete new environment, right? The new system, new environment. Use the new languages. I think it's also a big challenge. Zhu Min 行长呢，是我在中国银行工作期间的老领导。他海外学成回来后呢，长期处于。中国金融业改革的前沿，使他具备了以中国视角看全球、以国际视角看中国的多维度的优势。I sometimes say he speaks two languages, and I don't mean he speaks English and Chinese. Obviously, he does that. But I think、uh, being able to understand both.、Um, Uh, systems and societies, and therefore try to find a bridge that brings people together and to agree.、Uh, we find common ground and then ways to solve issues rather than、uh, misunderstandings that lead to conflicts. Well, I have to admit, when I met Jumin, I didn't know China that well. A new chapter in Jumin's life has begun. From the offices of the bank to the halls and libraries of academia, he now serves at Tsinghua University's PBC School of Finance. Here, he preaches new strategies, dispels doubts, and cultivates talented students. With his influence, he is helping China's ever-growing financial sector become more robust. To support young generation become the future leaders, I, I consider that's my mission. I do feel time time I can contribute to the policy formation and push the further reform, which is also important for China and also for me personally. So I do that. But I really enjoy teaching and research and talk to the young kids and、uh, support them. Tsinghua University National Research Institute Zhu Min Teacher, please give a warm welcome. Chu Min is taking the lead to establish a lecture series named "The Future Is Here." He has invited many influential leaders to guest lecture from global politics, economics, finance, science, and culture. The lectures help students grasp the latest global macroeconomic trends and cultivate forward-looking financial talent. 朱院长他起了一个领路人的作用，他有一个非常核心的观点，就对我们讲，就是说做任何研究要从大处着眼，小处着手，心中有虎才不会画一个猫。From a sugar factory worker to a rainmaker economist, Jun Min's story is simply legendary, and it has coincided with China's unprecedented development. His performance and values reflect the heart of China and of this era. No doubt, he is an icon of China, and Jun Min's fantastic story will continue on as he influences future generations with his dedication and wisdom.